Meeting is being recorded. Hey everybody, it's Dr. May. How are you today? Um, I'm here for another episode of our sensory motor psychotherapy video series. Um, so this one is all about what they call the orienting response. So this is about how we direct our attention to novel stimuli and how sometimes it's biased based on our past experience. And if it's biased in a way that doesn't help us anymore, we can learn to change it to make our life a little better now. All right, so I'm gonna show you how this all works. I'm gonna go through the whole thing, explain it. Okay, so here we go. Slowly, it's coming. There we go, all right. So this one's called pay attention, the orienting response. Okay, so in this picture, the person happens to be perking up his or her ears, but we use all our senses in the orienting response actually. So um, what is it by the way? All right, so let's look at the picture here. So um, the kid's playing video games and he sees or hears crash and he goes and looks just to see what's going on, okay? So when we're going about our everyday life and everything seems about the same and status quo, we don't pay attention too closely because it's just the average. But if something unique or novel comes our way to grab our attention, we tend to orient to it or direct our attention to it very quickly to kind of try to figure out what is this? Is it safe? Is it dangerous? Or is it neutral? Okay, so literally the word orient, if you look it up, means to direct somebody or something towards something, right? So basically we're directing ourselves and our attention towards something that is unique in our environment that grabs our attention because it's important for us to figure out what it is. And to orient yourself literally means to find your position in relation to everything that is around or near you. So given this novel thing that's happening, where am I at? Where should I belong and what should I do? Okay, so see how this all fits together. All right, another thing that our brain does in trying to figure out what the heck is going on right now is it automatically makes a quick comparison to the past. So past times when maybe I heard a similar loud sound or saw a similar striking thing and it tries to quickly figure out what I should do. And it acts quickly because this could be a matter of survival, right? So if I was out in the forest and I heard a noise, my brain wants to figure out, is this a dangerous predator and I should do something about it? Or is it just the leaves rustling and it's, it's okay, all right? Okay, so then we have to figure out, should I approach a stimulus, avoid the stimulus, or just ignore it because it's no big deal, all right? And this happens throughout the day pretty automatically, but sometimes it's a little more striking than other times because the stimulus is more, um, more intense, okay? So let's look at a little picture of a rabbit here to kind of get a better sense of the body language we might exhibit when we're in the middle of an orienting response. So as you can see, this is something that not just humans do, but even animals do, okay? So um, I picked this on purpose because the rabbit just happened to show like just the exact posture that captures the orienting response, right? So maybe it heard something and now all of a sudden it's, it's up and out of tension, right? It perks up its ears, it turns its head, it widens its eyes, it holds its breath just to not make any additional sounds to really check it out, okay? It, it kind of gets a little bit aroused preparing for fight or flight so its heart rate and blood pressure go up, right? And um, it might temporarily be still and frozen just to not make any sound and to try to, you know, assess the situation, okay? But there's also a preparedness to move just in case, all right? So although we're not rabbits, we kind of do the same thing, okay? So one of the things that we're going to talk about today, though, is that we actually have certain habits of orienting that we develop based on our earlier experiences, okay? So we don't equally orient to everything. We are more likely to draw our attention to certain things in our environment that in the past were more significant to us, okay? So if we look at the picture here, um, the guy in the center with the pink jacket that's saying, um, hey, is maybe very sensitive to cues that maybe people don't like him or that he's being rejected or that people are talking about him. So the people in front might have been talking about anything, but he's worried, like, maybe they're talking about me. Oh, you know, like we have that anxiety about, you know, people don't like me, right? And that might, that habit of orienting to that 
might have originated from earlier experiences. And so any hint of it now, he might be easily drawn to, okay? But that could happen to us with a variety of situations, okay? Not just rejection, but other things that felt uncomfortable or unsafe to us in the past, okay? So um, as I wrote on the third bullet here, let's just read this together. So our orienting habits were usually learned as ways to cope with past trauma or attachment problems, right? So based on issues we had in relationships or issues we had with feeling endangered, we developed habits of orienting to help us survive and adapt the best way we possibly could, okay? Um, and because they're tied into our survival, they persist a long time, even when they're no longer useful, okay? Just like the, our habits of body language and so forth that we talked about in the previous video. All right, so here's the kind of the progression, right? So we had past trauma or attachment difficulties. And from there, we developed some orienting habits. And unfortunately, if we continue those habits now, sometimes it creates problems for us because they're no longer useful in these current circumstances, right? They were useful in the past, but maybe not always now. And at times they might even get in the way of us functioning now, okay? So they might actually keep us stuck um, lead us to pick out all the negatives and all the threatening things in our environment without looking at the fuller context and without maybe fully realizing that they're not a problem right now, you know? So um, we might even ignore other information that's letting us know that it's okay. Maybe there's this one little thing going on, but overall, these are, things are okay now. But if I'm so stuck in my old orienting habits, like let's say looking for danger, or looking for a threat or looking for a rejection, I might miss other clues, the bigger picture, wise mind picture, that things are safer now, okay? So we could work toward changing our orienting habits because of that, that's the good news. But first I wanna give you a couple examples, all right, of orienting habits that might persist and how they could create problems, all right? So let's say we're looking at the top guy on the left. So there's a man who's afraid of a dog. So let's say in the past, when he was a little boy, he was attacked by a dog and bitten by a dog. And so that was a really, you know, scary experience for a little boy, right? So he's kept that stuck with him. So now he's very oriented toward dogs. He could be maybe walking down the street, just minding his own business and he hears a dog and all of a sudden he's, oh my God, look, there's a dog right? His attention's immediately drawn. Maybe there's anxiety that floods him at the same time because he has that old feeling like I could be bitten by a dog, right? But unfortunately, that might not always be the case, right? A lot of times you're walking down the street, people walk their dogs and they're totally fine. They don't even want to bother with you. They're friendly, if anything. Um, and most of the time it's not dangerous. But if you're stuck on orienting to a dog and fearing the worst, fearing that it's gonna attack you, it might actually shrink your world. You know, you might be afraid to take walks down the street or at the park, or you might be afraid to go to a friend's house if the friend happens to have a dog, right? So now my old fears and my old orienting habits of always looking out for the scary dog is preventing me from fully living my life, okay? So let's look at the second one. So let's say in the past, you know, maybe based on experiences I had in my family or at school with peers, I had bad experiences being insulted, disrespected, threatened, made fun of, teased, whatever. And so I tend to orient very quickly to feeling threatened socially by other people, whether it's um, being criticized, um, being attacked, being judged, you know, and so any hint of that, I might immediately orient toward. Okay, so unfortunately, now I might be misreading neutral cues as possibly threatening. So anything that might seem possible, might, might immediately start reacting to because my brain's associating it with old stuff, right? But that may not be the case right now. And so I might miss out on the potential of making positive relationships now because I'm misreading cues from other people. So I also might overreact I might get too defensive or I might get argumentative when maybe it's really not necessary, okay? So that's how sometimes our old habits could get in the way now. 
So instead of being mindfully in the present with who's in front of me and what's in front of me and looking at the whole picture, my attention gets much narrowed and I'm much more repeating the past or living in the past. All right, see how that works? Okay, but like I said before, it is possible to change our orienting response. So step one, as it often is, is just to be aware of what we're orienting to. So I need to practice being mindful of the fact that I am orienting towards certain cues and perhaps certain cues that were based on past experiences where it was necessary to orient to those things, okay? Um, and once I'm aware of them, I can make the voluntary choice to orient to other things or to neutralize my reaction to those original things I was orienting to that perhaps were threatening, okay? So then we could function a little bit better now, yeah. Okay, so benefits, right? So why are we changing our orienting response? There's a lot of benefits to this. So it helps us to be a little more flexible in the here and now, right? So if I'm just rigidly clinging to an old association or an old orienting response that keeps everything narrow, but if I'm flexible and more open, right? I see things more clearly, more accurately. I could learn new things. I could pick up on other cues from other people and I can respond in a more adaptive and productive manner, okay? Um, I also have the opportunity of maybe seeing things I never saw before. Not that I'm making stuff up, but maybe stuff I just always overlooked. So um, that's why I put some of those positive pictures on the top. So the first one looks like a book and the book is actually called, I See Kindness Everywhere. Now, if you're always looking for signs of rejection or signs that people don't like you, you might miss the kindness that's right in front of your eyes. You know, but if you practice orienting to it, you might see it in places where you always missed it. Okay. Second one says, be happy, not because everything is good, but because you can see the good in everything. Right? What if I always overlook the good because I was always looking for the threat? Okay. So I'm not inventing it, I'm not making it up, but I'm just seeing what's there that I always missed. Right? And just think of how that would change my quality of life, just to be more in touch with the good that's actually present or the people who are actually kind and to really take that in and appreciate it. Right, So that can make me feel so much better about myself or calm down my emotions or help me relate better to other people. Right, So these are huge benefits. And it, it stems from being able to recognize what my orienting response is and choose to orient to other things as well. Okay, now I'm gonna do a few exercises with this, just some ideas to get this going. So um, here we go. So this is the picture I got from the sensory motor psychotherapy textbook for their exercises, okay? And I was gonna try to find something for the from the internet instead as to not um, photocopy their stuff, but this one just has so many components in it that I think that they purposely put in so therefore it's kind of important to use the original, okay? So if you were to look at this picture, just look around and notice what jumps out to you first, okay? So there's a lot of different people doing different things. Some are alone, some are together. This animal, this children, this adults, this birds, this trees, right? So what stands out to you? What was some of the first things that popped out to you? Actually, they're asking for three things. Sorry, I missed that part. So look at the three things that jump out to you first. Okay, you could pause it if you need to, but I'm gonna go on. All right, so when you list the three things, is there anything that they have in common? So what stands out to you about those three cues you noticed? Such as like, you know, were they all animals? Like maybe you notice the birds and the dogs, right? Or are they people, certain types of people? Are they mostly male? Are they mostly female? They mostly couples, mostly alone. Like, what is it about the three things that might have something in common, okay? Or how would you describe them? So when you think about the cues you selected, like, so think about those three things and just let it soak in for a minute. Then just tune in to your body and how your body feels as you think about those three things you noticed, okay? Then describe about the three cues that you picked. Do they indicate any relationship problems or that bad things might happen? Okay, so am I sensing danger in some way? 
do the three things indicate that life is good or the world is safe? Like, is there something good that you focused on? Um, or do they confirm any negative thoughts or fears that you have? Or do they represent some kind of a positive outlook? All right, so just some points of re reflection, okay? So then reflect on why you might have circled certain cues. So it, do they remind you of experiences you've had in your life or relationships you've had with family or friends? So is there maybe something familiar about what you picked? Or are they things you would like to experience? Maybe there's a, a dream or a wish component here, right? You know, kind of a goal component, okay? All right, so a little bit more, there's more questions. So look at the picture again, okay? So this time, try to notice the stuff you didn't notice so much the first time. Okay, so really look carefully. Maybe there's some extra things that, you know, will pop out this time around. Then think about why they didn't stand out for you the first time and why you think that might be. And consider, are there other kinds of things in that picture that you would prefer to pay more attention to in the future? You know, like, would it make you feel better to look at certain things versus other things? Would it be more helpful? All right. So take your time answering these. You could certainly reflect on this, pause it, um, write some answers in a journal. Okay. All right. So this is another exercise. So this one's called tracking your orienting habits. Okay. So this one is kind of like something you could do over the course of time in your natural habitat. Okay. So over the next week, let's say, Try to be more aware of what you orient toward, okay? What's drawing your attention the most, okay? Um, and you could kind of like write this down, right? So if you have a journal, you could kind of reflect on your day or write down what's been grabbing your attention and then maybe put it in a few categories of negative, positive, or neutral, right? So then you could kind of see a little more clearly like what are the kinds of things that I'm noticing, right? So examples of the negative would be signs of a, of a potential threat, maybe people, sounds, or things that appear menacing, um, signs of relational strife with family, friends, or colleagues, so any kind of tension or arguing or you know, people not liking you, things like that, any kind of criticism or negative comments, is that something you feel really sensitive to sometimes, right? On the positive side, are you able to focus on positive relationships or positive interactions you've had with family, friends, or colleagues? Or maybe you're drawn toward people you find attractive that just kind of come by you or that you see on television. Or people who look friendly, does, do they draw your attention? Or do, are you able to take in praise or compliments? Do they really stand out to you, okay? On the other hand, there's other things in your environment that you might categorize as neutral, all right? So maybe certain things in nature you like to pay attention to, or maybe certain noises you notice that aren't positive or negative one way or another. It's just a noise you happen to hear. Um, maybe you just observe people and just how they look without judging it one way or another. Do um, you like to look at people's faces or expressions? Do um, you like to orient toward animals or pets or certain types of objects that maybe draw your interest or other things that more are related to art or design or architecture, or, you know, artistic type of things? Okay, so it's just a matter of reflection. Okay, so we're not judging it. Um, don't worry if you're like, oh my God, I, no I noticed so many negative things. Okay, it's just an observation, right? So we're just kind of uh, taking an inventory of the kinds of things we orient to so we can be more aware, okay? All right, so after you do this exercise, all right? So let's say I recorded the different things I noticed over the course of a week. I could continue the reflection by asking myself a few questions, right? So what did I orient toward that made me feel good or safe, right? So I could take note of those things. And when I think about those things and reflect on those good things I noticed, how does my body feel, right? How do I physiologically respond just thinking about those things? On the flip side, so what did I orient toward that made me feel bad or unsafe? And when I think about those things, then what happens to my body, my physical responses, okay? So I could just write down my answers and just take note, okay? And then finally, just kind of reflecting on it, sort of like we did with that picture, are there any things that maybe I didn't pay too much attention to, but I'd like to pay more attention to? What are some things maybe I overlooked or that I would wanna put more of my energy into noticing? 
perhaps things that might make me feel a little more positive or a little bit better. Okay, and I could also guess, sorry, I forgot the last part, how orienting to those other things might make my body feel. Or if I reflect on them now, just thinking about what they are, I could take note of how my body feels. Okay, so now we're getting to the choice a little bit more, okay? So this one's called choosing what to orient to. So what I could do is I could just, you know, maybe take a walk. If I'm able to go outside because the weather's good, I could take a walk around my neighborhood. Or maybe I could take a walk in the store or, you know, just down the hallway at work or school. And in advance, before I do it, right, I want to think about what would I like to orient to during my walk? Okay, so imagine what the walk might be, you know, so make it realistic based on the environment you're going to. And just write down a few things you would prefer to orient to. And then actually try to make an effort to orient to it. Okay. So for example, if you're in nature, um, you could orient to the scenery, the trees, the birds, uh, you know, grass, flowers, things like that, if you want to. Or maybe other people walking, pushing strollers, walking dogs, wh whatever it happens to be for you. Okay, so then next. So after your walk, we're gonna reflect a little bit. I'm gonna list all the things that I feel like I oriented to during my walk. What would I actually pay attention to, okay? And then I'll try to put it into those categories again of like negative, neutral, positive. And then kind of think, well, all right, how well was I able to follow my orienting plan? So was I actually able to pay attention to the things that I wanted to pay attention to that I decided in advance I wanted to pay attention to? And if I wasn't successful, why not? You know, what, what, what do I think made it hard for me if I had a hard time doing it? Okay. All right. So this one's called <clears throat> early attachment and orienting, right? So a lot of times, like I was saying, our, our orienting habits developed as we were growing up. And so our relationships with our family and the goings on of those relationships had an impact on the kinds of things I orient to now. Because when, when you're a young little helpless kid, you need your family to survive. So you have to pay attention to certain things and respond accordingly so you get your needs met. Okay, so that's why this has an influence on us. Okay, for in, in good or bad, right? It, it has an influence. So we're going to do a little exercise just to kind of uh, better understand how this plays out in our life. Okay, so first you're going to remember time growing up when you were with your family. Okay, so just think of like a scene from your family life. So maybe you're eating dinner together or you're going on a trip or you're playing a game or you're in the backyard or whatever it happens to be for you. Okay, and just like a typical scene. And then consider like the quality of interactions among your family members. You know, so like, what is it, was it usually like when everybody was together? And you know, what were the interactions like? What did it feel like? So let's say on the left, we have a picture of a family who looks like they're having a good time on vacation. And we'll just make the assumption that maybe it's generally a happy family with secure attachments and things are generally pretty good, right? So maybe some of the words that I use to describe those interactions would be respectful, stable, accepting, calm, loving, safe, supportive, lighthearted, or happy. Okay, obviously it could be other words as well, right? But maybe those are some of the things that, you know, might come to mind. However, maybe, you know, you weren't that lucky, your family had a little more conflict or a little more distance, a little more, you know, issues, okay? And so other negative words might come to mind, thinking of a typical scene with your family. So it could be things such as depressing, critical, neglectful, frantic, disrespectful, demanding, serious, sad, unpredictable, or judgmental, right? So whatever comes out for you, there's no right or wrong, okay? Just something that kind of comes to mind when you think about earlier interactions with your family. All right, so now, next part. So when you think about those qualities you selected and that scene that you were in, think about emotionally, using your motion words, how did it make you feel when you were younger, okay? Now, take note of that, write that down, and think about describing current situations or relationships where you orient to those same qualities that you selected from your early relationships, right? So let's say, for example, I picked out critical. Thinking about a scene with my family, I think about times when I felt criticized by them, okay? 
So now when I think about a current situation, do I tend to orient toward people who criticize me? Again, because in the past, that's what I oriented to, okay? So when I think about that link, some light bulbs might go off, okay? And then I want you to notice what changes happen in your body when you orient to those cues. So let's say as I think about times when I've been criticized, past or present, what happens to me physically? How does my body react to that? Okay, and then write that down. Okay, so then five, number five here. Describe any other cues you would like to practice orienting toward. Okay, so let's say instead of focusing on in the here and now, potential being criticized, I prefer to orient it toward something else, right? To open up more possibilities for interactions and relationships now. Okay, so what would you prefer to orient toward now? And how might orienting toward those other things change your physiology, change your body, such as your posture, your breath, or your movement, okay? Chances are it will change, okay? All right. Now, changing orienting habits, all right? So we have a guy here where he go down to the old habits or up to the new habits, right? And we're trying to create something new. So I want you to choose three orienting habits that you believe you have, probably things you identified in previous exercises here, so three orienting habits you would like to change, okay? Then identify how that habits affects your emotions and body, right? So if I orient toward the old stuff all the time, how does that impact my emotions? How does it impact my body? And how do I, could I describe what I prefer to do instead? All right, so it's similar themes throughout some of these exercises, but there's different ways of putting it that might continue to like make it clearer for you. So let's just go over an example. All right, so three orienting habits you'd like to change. So let's say I orient to possible signs of rejection, such as an abrupt tone, ending a phone conversation early or silence, All right? So those things can mean a variety of things, but I might quickly orient to them and assume it might mean re rejection, okay? So how does that affect my emotions in my body? I might feel anxiety and panic. I might start feeling my heart racing, shaky, frantic, alone, like, oh my God, this is gonna mean rejection, this is terrible. I'm not good enough. I feel feeling shame because maybe the person doesn't like me and I'm not okay. All right. So all these things might cascade based on that orienting habit. What would I prefer to do instead? Well, maybe instead of just assuming that because they're not smiling, they don't like me, maybe I could orient to other signs, maybe that the person does care, such as other times when maybe they smile or they make eye contact or that they do listen to me sometimes you know, or maybe um, they do other times return my text or calls in a timely manner, but maybe that one or two times they didn't, right? So how do I look at the bigger picture and orient to other things that maybe I'm not paying enough attention to? Okay. All right. So there you have it. Orienting. You probably learned more, <laughs> more about that than you thought you would. But as you can see, if you put some mindfulness to it and, you know, you kind of evaluate what it is you're orienting to, you have a chance of changing it, all right? And that could start to make a difference in the way we approach our life. All right, so thanks for listening, you guys, and I'll see you again soon with the next video. All right, be well, I'll talk to you soon.